Makoto Shinkai is a director you'll likely know whether you watch anime or not. You know his most popular work, Your Name, that still remains the third highest grossing Japanese film ever. Or by his most recent film that ended up being a huge success as well, Suzume. His movies are often about the theme of love, but always told through the most unconventional ways. Whether it is two people falling for each other after swapping bodies in your name, this is a tragic oversimplification of the movie, please watch it yourself if you haven't already. Or a love between a boy who runs away to Tokyo and a girl who can control weather. It's what Shinkai loves portraying in his movies. And even the films with weaker storylines and characters are still 100% worth watching purely because of their stunning visuals. Like a short 40-minute film, The Garden of Words, that movie probably has the best animation out of any Shinkai's films. In fact, it is one of the most gorgeously animated movies I have ever laid my eyes on. The polish each frame has is jaw-droppingly stunning. Due to his influence and mark in the industry, this Japanese director has been referred to as the new Miyazaki, but he didn't get here in a day, obviously. He created numerous projects to make a name for himself, and one of his earliest short films is what I want to focus on today, a movie that I fell in love with since the first time I discovered it. In 1998, 25-year-old Makoto was working as a graphic designer at a gaming company, Falcom. He had the idea behind a short film he wanted to make since 1997. Back then, he was in love with a girl who was struggling and didn't feel so good. She quit her job and wasn't leaving the house, so to make her feel better, Shinkai came up with the story of his very first animated short, She and Her Cat. With this goal in mind, he thus started his work on the movie and released it in 1999. She and Her Cat is a story of a young woman living her life through the passing seasons, and it is all told through a viewpoint of a cat she adopts in the beginning of this five minute long beautiful film. The movie opens with a shot of a girl in her small apartment. We hear the soothing sounds of rain. It right away sets up a peaceful atmosphere, but you can also tell that this girl we are seeing is troubled. She gets a phone call, but purposefully avoids it. We only see her legs, but you can see that whatever this phone call is, it is a cause of distress. We get to see a laundry basket with clothes thrown around it. This lady is clearly going through some rough times. She leaves her house, but when she comes back, she brings with her the cat, the one who is narrating this tale. We get the title card, she and her cat their standing points. A beautiful soundtrack starts playing. It was composed by Tenmon, who later on worked with Shinkai in several of his other movies, such as 5 centimeters per second, which also has a wonderful soundtrack. Back to the film itself, though, as the somewhat emotional and sentimental sounding melody plays in the background, we get shots of the simple surroundings, the building complex, the electrical wires around the city. The sun shines through them. The rain has finally passed. The shoes and the umbrella are still wet, but the rain is over. And we start seeing this little cat describe his owner and her days, how she goes to work every day and lives alone. But to this cat, it doesn't matter what she does. He loves her purely because she is there. Spring is over and summer arrives. The cicadas are singing and the time keeps moving. We get even more shots of surroundings wires, a bridge, and sounds of the passing train. This is just a normal neighborhood after all, but Shinkai loves drawing detailed backgrounds. He excels at it. Back then, as he was working at a game studio, he was constantly making detailed backgrounds, and he applied those skills in this movie, thus creating a style of his own. Because every other movie he's made after has as much thought put into every frame. You can tell a movie is directed by Makoto Shinkai when you see shots of trains, breathtaking skies, electrical wires, wires, and birds flying over the city. And that style started with this first movie. To quote from a 2011 interview, Shinkai said this about the background work in She and Her Cat. I was living in a typical small Japanese apartment, and around the apartment buildings were concrete telephone poles with lots of electrical wires. That's a typical kind of surroundings we have while living in a very small place. Even though the surroundings may be jumbled with ugly things, I wanted to find the beauty in the things all around me. Even living in a small apartment surrounded by electrical lines, I wanted to make it look detailed and beautiful to express that it was okay to live in such a situation. That's why I believe I focus on all these backgrounds details. Back to the film. So the summer reaches its end. The girl gets a phone call. Once again, we can observe this only through the cat. We don't know why, but she starts crying. 
The cat has no idea of what happened, but he knows that whatever it is, she is not at fault. Hearing the cat, who is voiced by Shinkai himself, describe the beauty of this lady throughout the film, also comforting her in his mind and reassuring that she is not at fault, reminds us that this was a film made for a special girl in this director's life, and that these words that the cat says are the words Shinkai wants his lover to hear. Winter comes and life keeps moving. The same track from the beginning of the movie starts playing. The days are now darker, the sun comes out much later. It is snowing and cold, but there is a warmth to this last part of the movie. It feels like the movie is telling you that at the end, Everything is okay after all. The girl pets her cat, shuts the heavy door, gets on a train, and goes to work yet again. The movie closes with the words, I, and probably her too, this world, I think we like it. I have rewatched this short film at least 20 times, no exaggeration. In fact, this number is definitely much higher. Ever since the first time I watched it, I felt a slight sadness, but also something really comforting. It is the simplicity of this movie and the way how Shinkai shows the most mundane things in a beautiful way that really makes you fall in love with this short. The director himself stated that he loves the simplicity of this film and that he let the animation speak for itself. You see, I love anime. I love pretty much everything about it, but one aspect of it that I find really appealing is how the simplest things can look so beautiful in the animated style. Sometimes your own vision of the world becomes really gray, and in those moments, anime can bring color into those views. Not only quite literally though, because for example, She and Her Cat is a black and white film, but it still has the same effect. It is about the art itself that can help you see your boring surroundings as something much more beautiful. I have made a video on a Korean movie called Poetry, where I talked about the invisible beauty of life. And it all comes back to that yet again. Even the simplest things can have that beauty and spark to them. The rose-tinted glasses are brought up in conversations as a negative thing. Take them off and see the world as it is. But it doesn't hurt to put those glasses on every now and then. It doesn't mean you should become blind to the ugliness of the world. There is a lot of it and we have to see it. But sometimes putting those rose-tinted glasses to appreciate the simplest view can be healing. Time moves really fast, we are already halfway through the year. Sometimes it is terrifying because life can feel like a constant race, but it is also comforting that whatever you go through, those freezing cold days of winter will end soon enough, and you will be greeted by the warmth of spring and summer yet again. Recently, when I came back home from a long, exhausting day at work, I checked my mailbox as I usually do, and I found a letter there, a very special letter from a friend back home. I opened it, and inside were some really cute small gifts, but the thing I loved the most was the postcard inside. I talked to this friend almost every day, but getting this physical letter quite literally made my day, and when I looked at the quote on the card itself, it warmed my heart so much. I knew that she picked it wanting to send me a reminder, a very very important message that we should all try and not overlook. Sometimes you just need to stop and look around at all the beautiful things. Thank you, my friend. I really appreciate it.